It is my pleasure to introduce, actually an honor, to introduce Sister Nancy Roach to all of you. Um, candidates, associates that we already have. Sister Nancy was one of the, was the person who I guess I could say dreamed of an associate relationship in the congregation and was actually, I don't want to use the word in vain, but she was actually the founders of, the, of us, of the associates, not the community now, but of the associates. So I'm going to give you Sister Nancy and let her tell the story in her own words. Well, um, circumstances open us to experiences. And um, because I was education counselor in Wasasak Blue Province at a time when uh, social justice groups were opening up, at a time when religious life was changing, and we saw that where before we were basically assigning sister so-and-so to teach grade whatever or such and such a subject, that that was passing. Um, at the same time that I got involved in social justice, for what I just mentioned, I also was sent for preparation in spiritual direction exactly 50 years ago. And um, at that time, it was because we knew that the sisters would, would be moving into different areas and um, that, that the sisters would be discerning with the community where they would go and what they would be doing. And because of, of uh, basically an education counselor, counselor for ministry as you we might translate it today, uh, I had that preparation. And that preparation included very deeply a preparation in discernment of spirits. And I learned that uh, because of my contact with social justice movement, my contact with colleagues across the country and uh, in Canada, I began to hear about interest in lay spirituality, about connections with congregations. Today, you would have heard about the nuns and nuns, but basically that's it. They're lay people who were interested in the spirituality and were advised to contact religious communities for that. Um, we began to be aware of our diminishing numbers and uh, what did that mean in terms of the future of the community? And I, I will never say that we did any of this for, uh, um, because of any of this, did we form the association. I became aware of lay people seeking spirituality and turning to religious communities for that. As I have been enamored of the spirit of Marguerite from the time of my novitiate, and I have grown to understand the depth of her own searching and before she finally arrived at what where God wanted her to be. Um, I began to say, well, you know, we're going to keep, we're going to keep on in that spirit, the charism. You just had a, an interview with Sister Jo Bajali and I read it, her, her beautiful understanding and depth of charism, which is, which is what I understand as well. And um, because of this, I invited us in a general conference to explore receiving lay people as associates. The reaction was reservation, questioning, which is perfectly valid. And uh, one of the provincials said, and her wisdom strikes me to this day, she said, Nancy, let's not form another committee. That's not what we want. 
And she was absolutely right. The associates is not, we need committees. Committees are formed for a specific purpose and, uh, and they work towards that purpose. I'm not denying the necessity. I have been in committees for decades of my life. But the associates were looking for a different type of linkage with me, with, uh, to me, pardon me, different type of linkage to me. And the image that I had then, 40 years ago, and that has never left me, is that of a maypole. <laughs> a maypole is a very solid structure. And around that maypole, there are, are ribbons of all different colors that if they weren't attached to the maypole, they would get lost. They'd be flying off in the wind. But on the other side, because they are attached to the maypole, they give it a beauty. They give it a, 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 a sense of there being more to this pole than just a, a solid foundation. And um, the more I, I have seen the associates grow over the decades, the more that has come back to me uh, of, uh, of, uh, of a symbol that it goes in directions where, where the spirit is leading it, but the, the, the connection that there would be no meaning if they were not connected to the Maypole, which is the Congregation of Notre Dame. And um, in the beginning, we just had a couple of people who, who were interested and, and a couple of sisters who were also interested in working with them. But as we gradually moved more, sisters began to see these connections with lay people that um, was, as, as Sister Jo men mentions very clearly in the uh, interview that I just recently read, uh, through the charism. It's not to do a job. It's not to uh, be friends with the sisters. It's because there is a spiritual attraction within the man or woman that that person finds within the congregation. And the interview with the new associate from Chicago, I read in her, her interview as well, she captures it very well in terms of the relationship, not just with the sisters, but among the other men and women who are associates of the congregation. So um, discernment, you never begin by discerning. You have something in front of you, you get all the information that you can get about it, you never get all of the, but you have to have some information. And then it's to see where is the spirit leading us? And you look at all of the signs, and that's that's been a um, kind of a a, a a symbol for me throughout my years in spiritual direction. Where does the spirit seem to be leading us? Once you begin to say, oh, "Well, I'll follow that and see if it's going any place." Some of them, some of the things don't go any place and it dies, it dies a natural death. But other things, you, as you begin to explore it, then you begin to get information. You begin to get as in prayer, a sense of, of uh, hey, this seems to be all right. Yeah, this seems to be right. And then in the process of living it, you begin to get confirmation of the decision that you make 
and the decision that we made as a congregation to have lay associates. I have found out many, many things since then about lay associates that, um, that intrigues me. Um, first of all, in scripture, um, we have uh, from the apostles, they said to him, when the, 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 uh, the, in the Acts of the Apostles, they said, you know, we have, we have things to do and uh, we can't be doing what you're asking, but form a group of deacons. And so the, so the deacons were formed. And then somewhere along the line, they died out. But with Vatican II, they came back. And, um, and we have them, we have them now as associating with, with ordained priests. There were women, you find it, it's, I believe, in St. Luke's Gospel, chapter eight, the beginning of it, talks about women who accompanied Jesus and the apostles and supported them with what they were able to do for them and with them. And then somewhere, I don't know, I don't have enough knowledge of history to know where it all went, but we're coming back another way in seeing that there are men and women who do not have the call to celibacy, but who have a call to spirituality. And the spirituality is based in a charism. And that is the attraction to us. That's where the call is. It is a vocation. It is a calling. There are other men and women who will be on committees, boards that will help us in terms of our maintaining ourselves at another level. But that is not the same. Associates are not so much looking at, at trying to support us at, a, at a, an institutional level in a business type of a, a relationship. They are living some call within themselves in the context of our charism, and they are finding support for that from the congregation of Notre Dame, the Maypole. And, um, and, and as this new associate uh, from Chicago said so beautifully in the interview, uh, and it was just, just this week, May 3rd, was this date if I read the interview with Sister Joe and then the interview with the the uh, Chicago uh, associate, that there's, there's, a, there's a relationship among the associates that uh, stems from the contact with the congregation of Notre Dame. But also there's a, a relationship among them where they find support, bonding, connectedness, that's, I use the word mysterious. It's spiritual. It's not just they're nice ladies. There's something that goes beyond it. There's a, like, this person understands me at a depth in myself that no one else has quite captured yet. It's a fascinating thing in history to see that approximately every 200 years is, is like a shift or a movement in religious life. The Congregation of Notre Dame was founded in the 17th century. And it began with a group of lay women who accompanied Marguerite to Quebec to teach. And well, the first five years that Marguerite came all by herself, no child lived long enough to, school, to, to get to school age. So, but once after five years, they, they got a healthier lifestyle that the children weren't dying in infancy. And she went back to France and brought women with her. And they came as lay women. And then living together, they gradually evolved, okay? And, 
And the Congregation of Notre Dame is the first non-cloistered community in the North Americas. For a long time, I thought it was the first non-cloistered community in all of the Americas. But when I was in Guatemala, I found a community there that had been founded uh, 10, 15 years maybe before the Congregation of Notre Dame. There was a settling in of this founding of a non-cloistered community, which was very strange in the church at that time, and bishops were reserved. And, and because of that, we were limited to no more than 80 women in the congregation as sisters until 1837, I believe it was. That's the 19th century, okay? In the 19th century, when that was lifted, that limitation of 80, there was an explosion also of apostolic religious institutes. Many of the congregations that we know today were founded in the 19th century as non-cloistered communities for apostolic purposes. And in that, we flourished. And it was in the 19th century, for example, that the CNDs reached out to Illinois 175 years ago. A couple of years ago, we celebrated 150 years in the city of Waterbury, where Ellen and I are sitting right now, and, uh, and gradually expanded. But all of that was in the 19th century. There was further international expansion in the 20th century, but it was all in that direction. In the last part of the 20th century, we have seen dramatic changes in the church and in religious life. And for me, that's not the death of religious life. There's a new form of religious life that's coming. And all of the signs, not just on the congregation, but all of the signs seem to indicate emerging, a connection, a maypole image again, of lay people and consecrated men and women, but, but within the church. And religious life is beginning to take that form in the 20th, 21st century. So we're true to the charism. We're true to the spirit of Marguerite as we begin to nurture this. I will never forget in the general chapter of 1996 when we were talking about receiving women in the Cameroon and the, the, the honesty and fidelity of the sisters in Cameroon at that time to be very careful to to um, not betray the culture of the women in receiving them into uh, the congregation of Notre Dame. And man and woman associates, not married, but they were at the general chapter and they said, you take care of the spirituality, we'll help you with the culture, but let's go. You hear me? So we're, uh, whatever is going on, now in the 21st century, it's like together, let's go. I don't know where it's gonna go, but, but the spirit doesn't tell you that. What you, you just go where the life is, where you see the, the new life emerging and, and, and it's, not, uh, it's not foreign to who we are in terms of our charism. Some of the fear, especially where now we don't have any sisters in Rhode Island anymore. I think some of the fear there is, if, to use Nancy's uh, uh, illustration, they're afraid that the pole is going to go away and then the, the uh, streamers will be floating in the air. I think there's a little bit of fear there uh, as the sisters, you know, move on. In our province, you know, uh, it's, it's a new uh, experience because we've always had sisters everywhere. And as the sisters are moving closer to Connecticut, Rhode Island, New York, um, 
it, 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 Rhode Island associates were going through this um, right now, not having assistance, but they're, they're, they're doing well. They're doing very well. And, and, they, and Donna is very uh, attentive to them. So I, I, but I think it's something that, you know, it's new to us in our province. Um, I would like to speak to the spirituality of that. Good. Um, we don't know the future. And, you know, you look, back over the 2000 years of Christianity and they haven't been able to, but they haven't been able to foretell the future. What they've done and what we continue to do is follow where the spirit leads us as far as we can determine that. But when we live transition, which is what we are living, when we live it, we are transformed. And part of that transformation was in living a transition, we opened ourselves, our hearts, our homes, our souls to lay associates and it's transforming us. And ultimately that will transcend the difficulties of the life and so we say, yes, this is right. This is where we belong. And this is what we have to keep developing. But always in the light of the Holy Spirit drawing us onward. And I might go back to the history of Mother Bourgeois herself in her search for her own vocation. And there are times when she thought it was to go one place and the door shut. So she cried another when the door shut. She became an associate to a congregation that was cloistered. And in, in the bottom line, when it looked like religious vocation out the window, and she said, yes, I, I see the, the Holy Spirit calling me with de Maisonneuve to Montreal. She heard Mary say, Go, I will not abandon you. And that was in 1653. And the congregation today is not the congregation of the 17th century physically, but in mind, charismatically, yes. When she uh, had the, the feed in the one and the women who came over to be married so that the, the colony would be formed. Um, when they were brought to Montreal, Bill Marie, she stayed with them. <laughs> and it's in her writing. She said, I know the sisters aren't really happy with me doing this, but she saw that it was important to do. And then they tell us historically her name is in the register for almost every single wedding. She was, she was intimate in forming good family life. And, um, and, and the sisters got involved too. So you, that's, that's where the sensitivity to the Holy Spirit is important for me. Where do we see the, the seeds of new life coming up and, and how does this resonate with our own prayer life, our, our spirituality, our charism? And I come back to charism. That is the most important thing. And Sister Jo expresses it very clearly, beautifully, and very clearly in the interview that you had with her, the, uh, I don't know, I saw the date was May 3rd, so probably the other day, I don't know. But um, we, need, we need to be uh, attentive to how the spirit is moving us from within as we see new things coming. And, and uh, as, as, I, as I keep going back, God shuts the door when that's not what it's going to be. I mean, even 
mother was who had tried to form a community right there in Troyes. And two women were going to join her. One died and the other didn't stay. And I, if, but she, she never gave up on her faith that God was guiding her life. And so Mary, Mary confirms that. Go, I won't abandon you. I believe religious life in the 21st century won't die. It will change. And it is changing. Those changes began, the seeds began in the latter part of the 20th century. And the, um, the whatever it's going to be, I, we don't know yet. Um, it, it, I mean, beginning the 20th century, they didn't know about Vatican II and all that was going to happen there, and, nor what went on in the world in that century that impacted religious life. So it's, it's a matter of trust, a very deep trust, that we are not alone, that God is guiding us, but that we are, are that we have to move where the calls to life will be. And that's going to be something that that doesn't look like the 20th century or the 19th century. And I'll be smiling down from heaven saying, don't. <laughs> <laughs>